Hello, All right. Mr. Rickham. Hello. How are you? How's, how's it going? Well, it's good. It's good. You know, it's uh, it's always stuff, right? Yes. <laughs> it's always stuff. Um, I'm so sorry for all the lollygagging and all the stuff. <laughs> but welcome to the house. Yeah, you're welcome. It's good to be here. It's good to be back. Seems like I've done this before. Yes, you have. And it. I am so glad that you agreed to come back on here. Sure. And this time, talk about all things um, Bella. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, angel angelman's syndrome. And you sure you want to get into that? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's deep water. It's deep water. Uh, well, I'll tell you. I'll just jump in. I'll just tell you the the one of the uh, some days. The the first thing that happens in the morning affects the rest of your day. So. At seven o'clock this morning, my daughter had an issue at 7 a.m. We just now, it's 5.30 p.m. We just now got it all rectified. Basically took our day out of commission the whole day. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really want to get into it. It was a stomach issue. Ah. So I'll let you draw your own conclusions. Um, but when you're dealing with someone who can't talk, who can't mm -hmm. express, who can't go to the bathroom without help, who can't dress themselves without help, who can't eat without help, um, can't take a shower without help. Not just help, you're basically doing it for them. I, I, I've, I've thought of this many times. Everybody who has children remembers what their kids were like when they were two. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what it's like, to have an angelman person in your life. Just imagine that they never ever grew past the age of two, that they stayed two forever. Um, mm -hmm. And and that is, and so my daughter's 21, she's almost 22. And, you know, she's essentially a two year old in a 21 year old body. So, so whatever problems do you think might arise from that, they do. <laughs> so all of that and then some. Uh, yeah. So that that was that was today. I had like this whole list of things I was going to get done today, and you know, it, it, it was at seven a.m. It was very apparent that not only am I not going to get them done, I'm not even going to get to them. You know. So sometimes you feel like you're walking in quicksand. Today was one of those days. Actually, most days you feel like you're walking in quicksand. And um, so I'm sorry if I sound frustrated, but it, it, it's, it's, it really isn't about being frustrated with her. I'm frustrated for her. You yeah. know, this isn't something she asked for. Um, mm -hmm. And she's doing remarkably well and doing the best she can. And it makes me have very little patience for people who have all their faculties and still can't get it together. It's like, you know, I got a 21 year old here who would give anything to be able to do, to do what you do, just be able to walk and talk and put her shoes on. If she could do that, she would be a powerhouse. What she's doing with the capabilities that she has is phenomenal. And I just, you know, my wife and I, neither one of us really, suffer whining much you know after that it's like i, I just can't yeah, yeah well can you walk can you talk yeah you're ahead of the game then get up and walk and talk you know i don't know uh that sounds that might sound harsh and i know people have issues i get it i mean i have them <laughs> we all have them but uh i don't know if other caregiver parents feel that way but uh we we you you distill a lot of bs out of your life when you have someone like that in your life because it's like there's just so it, it's like you know they say don't split the small stuff and you realize it's all small stuff it really mm -hmm. is 
uh, you know, we we used to have. Uh, it's funny because we were we were just downtown Nashville. Uh, my son was at a was in an ultimate frisbee tournament, and we were just downtown watching him play. And not far from where we used to live downtown, we used to live like right in the heart of Nashville. We had a great time, you know, before we had kids, we, we had cool places to live and we were always, you know, around town doing all kinds of cool stuff. We were thinking about that today. And, but the problems that we thought we had, uh, we wouldn't be able to sit in a conversation with now, you know, the problems that our friend group and that our, our peers, the, the problems we all set around. I, sometimes we talk about how that it was like, man, that, that, that was frivolous. You know, mm-hmm. I, I have, you know, so, you know, if some, if, if our single friends shows, we don't have any single friends anymore, but if they show up with relationship problems, it's like, you know what, uh, do it, don't do it, break up, stay together. That's, this is, you know, this, this is not on, on the, on the ledger of problems. This doesn't have to be a big one. I just feel mm-hmm. like I should probably leave, leave. I, 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 I just, I, I mean, you know, I just feel like I should stay, stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Boom. I just fixed it for you. You know what I mean? I do. I just feel like we, I feel like we should talk more, start talking. I don't know. You know, some of these things are like, we, we, we want to wallow in, a problem and it's not one. And, and I think definitely for me, having someone like my daughter in my life has helped me get down to the nitty gritty of that, you know, or where it's like, I just don't, I really don't have time for all the stuff that we can fix because I'm dealing stuff. I'm dealing with stuff every day that cannot be fixed. Like there is no answer. And so, um, I think if, I think if you're, in a world of easy answers, either you're not understanding the question properly, uh, or, um, you know, there really are easy answers and you're just not, you're not accepting them. You know, it's like, man, I just, I don't know if I should live in this house or that house. Just pick one, you know, just pick one. You'll be fine. Um, you'll figure it out. Yeah. You'll figure it out. You know, I gotta get that red car, the blue car, get the red one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean? This it's just it's just these kinds of things that that uh, I don't know if that, I don't know if any of this makes sense to you. I'm just I'm kind of I'm, I'm unloading on you here, but it, it but it uh, you know I don't know Bella and I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when, when just I don't I I, I like I don't want to go into today, and I'll tell you why because I I I really want to respect my daughter's privacy. And she gotcha. is she is not a prop, you know what I mean. She's not a prop to yes. to be a, a a a piece of conversation. So I don't like to go into all of her personal stuff. That's that's her stuff, and um, you know I don't I I don't want it to be like titillation for a podcast. Uh, no, but no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but it's you know it's it's um. Uh, it, but it can, like I said, it can, it, 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 it can get into the nitty gritty of your, of your very existence. Just imagine living for someone. Like if I told you, Donna, look, I'm kind of an empty vessel. So you have to do everything for me, you know, yeah. for, for a week, you, you have to be my life for a week. Um, just extrapolate that out, whatever that, whatever that entails, Whatever a human does, you have to do for for someone else. So, so it 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 just creates with it all of this. Um, well, it's extra work first of all, and it's a lot of time, and it's just a lot of you know planning. And uh, we live on a very very tight schedule, and uh, I'm actually really so I feel sorry the most for my son, you know, because he was raised with all this regimen regimented you know stuff and uh and then try to work on top of it i mean it's almost impossible really you know i i i you know and i've talked many times and i'm like i don't i don't know what else there's just no more time 
you know, there's no more time in the day. I'm not exactly sure what else I can do. I'm not exactly sure what else you can do. Um, but that's kind of it. That's, that's really what it's like, you know? And, um, I think it's also why I, I have so little, um, regard and so little, um, uh, bandwidth for like my own business for the, you know, my, for the music business, you know, for, for, for I, I don't, people think it's like sour grapes that I don't like to wa watch award shows and that I don't really care about Taylor Swift. And I don't really care about this artist or that artist. It's like, guys, I don't really have time for any of that. You know, I don't have time yeah. to think about it. I don't have time to worry about it. I, I don't have, you know, the, I don't have the space in my brain to fit in things that really don't matter, you know, and most of it doesn't matter, you know, uh, that's the one, the one thing about you, if you can't, if you've been in the music business for any length of time and you still think it matters, you, you've got to grow up <laughs> at some point you have to realize this is so, so not important. And yeah. we're, we're just kind of, if you're fortunate enough to, to be in it, make, make any kind of a living in it, then just, you know, kiss everybody. <laughs> give everybody a big hug and a high five and, you know, and just be happy with that. I, I, so anyway, uh, it, 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 it can you tell I'm, a, I'm just a little salty today. So you, you, you're catching me at the end of the day. So. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, but it, I think I, you said you wanted to talk about the caregiving thing. And I think any caregiver out there listening to me will absolutely get it. And I, I think they'll all go, yep, that right there, you know. So well, um about Angelman's in itself, has there been any um what's the word I'm looking for? I'm gonna lose my words now. Um <laughs> any new like breakthroughs they, or anything? Yeah, have they come up with any kind of new um any help for them? Any yes. Well, it's kind of like yes and no. It's um when we found out that we had a daughter with Angelman syndrome, uh, you know, we knew nothing about it. And I, I started cold calling people. This is before, really before social media, I put out something on MySpace. Does anybody know anything about Angelman syndrome? Yeah. And I got a, I got a private message. Yes. I have a friend who has a daughter with Angelman or a son or something. Call this number. And I started right there. Like, old school phone calls. Hi, I'm Reggie Ham. Just found out my daughter's got Angelman syndrome. I don't know anything about it. Would you talk to me? And got in the circle of people that way. People forget, you know, we've only had Facebook since 2009. You know, it's it hasn't been around that long. And we haven't had smartphones. You know, we haven't had all the stuff we've got. So in those days, it was, you know, we didn't have tons of information, but um, there was a lot of real heady hope with cures and stuff. And, and um, people were funding and we, I helped do this where we funded a lot of research, a lot of scientific research, really cutting edge, like way out there, Star Trek kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Um, you know, cause you're talking about changing DNA. You know, you're not just talking about some drug that can, you know, make make somebody walk straight or whatever. You're talking about changing somebody's DNA. That's very, very, you know, out there. So I have funded some of the, you know, most out on the edge scientific research uh, that there is. You're talking about the human genome. And in those days, and, and technically, like on paper, you can you can cure Angelman syndrome. You know, because it's it's you can see it. It's a deletion or a mutation of that chromosome. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a simple thing. I say a simple thing, but I mean, it's something we can see. It's not like a mystery. We know what it is. And we, you, you know, it is a mystery. But I mean, it's not a mystery about what it is. Like we know what it is. So it's so kind of half the battle sometimes is pinpointing it. Oh, yeah. OK, it's that. 
Um, but it's been it's it's been weird how the research has kind of gone this way and that way. Um, I asked one of the premier researchers one time we, we, we were having dinner and I said, what would curing this be? Would it be akin to like discovering penicil penicillin or antibiotics? I mean, put it on a in, in, a, in terms I can understand. He goes, well, it's a little more like Star Trek. It'd be, it'd be a little bit more like figuring out how to teleport. <laughs> you know, it's like that's that's that far out there. Um, so. Having said that, uh, there's there, there aren't like cure cures on the horizon, but what has happened in the community is through social media, through these groups, through people talking, uh, a lot of a lot of medications have gotten dialed in. OK, and a lot of therapies have gotten dialed in. If you do this and that, this they respond to this and they respond to that. And so we've been able to talk to people around the world because of social media and stuff like this, podcasts like this, where information's getting out. People have been able to ingest that and apply it. And so the last Angelman walk I went to, I noticed that the younger Angelman kids were doing a lot better than the young kids had done when my daughter was young, if that makes any sense. When I saw two and three year old toddlers with Angelman syndrome, they seem to be doing better than the mm -hmm. toddlers did when we were, you know, when we had a toddler. Yes. And I, I, you know, this is all just speculation on my part. I have no scientific data to, to back this up, but I, I think my hunch is it's because the communication among the families and among the research and all, everybody talks. So we all hear what's going on. And I think just even little things, hey, if you need sleep aids, this is something we try, you know, and there and there's a thing called Angelman Connections and the people post on it and we read it and there are all these support groups. And I, so so that, Donna, I think is where the real step for, steps forward are happening, or at least a lot of them. Uh, mm -hmm. The research really is still plugging right along. And, and I think, you know, some good things are happening. Um, and there's some, and th so while that's happening, there's some crazy things happening with, with, uh, genetic research. So it's like yeah. Angelman syndrome is kind of on this track. And then way over here is this is genetic research where there it's like the wild west. And, you know, there's a thing called CRISPR and it stands for right off the top of my head. I can't, give you the acronym, but it's, it's, it is a, I'm just, I'm dumbing this down because I have to dumb everything down for me, but it's, it's a process by which they take out certain strands of DNA and replace them with, you know, other strands of DNA, which cool. technically would fix Angelman syndrome. The yeah. problem with it is as soon as you reattach the new strand of DNA, all of it comes unraveled. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so basically you can fix it, but it will disintegrate a living being, you know? Uh, so, so in other words, it's, it's, it's theor theoretically fixable, right? They can do it in theory, but they just can't do it in practice. A lot of mice have died, you know, in, in, in the, in the learning of this. Um, so, but it's really exciting because they're, they're like, well, we at least know we can do it. You know, we can't do it successfully, but one day we'll figure out how to do it successfully. And, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70 years from now, it'll be as simple as that. It'll be as simple as putting somebody out for an hour and we're going to replace this DNA with that DNA. And boom, they wake up and, the, and, and they're, you know, they're whole. Um, I don't, I, I, again, I'm dumbing all this down and I don't, I haven't. I haven't talked to, to anyone who's dealing with CRISPR uh, in a couple of years. So it may be even further down the road, but I interviewed some guys who made a documentary for Netflix um, called unnatural selection. And it's, and it was basically about all of this crazy stuff people are doing with DNA research. And by the way, you don't have to be a scientist that you can order DNA kits and you can do the research in your garage and people are doing that. People are trying to genetically, uh, 
engineer dogs and genetically engineer that, you know, I've, I always wanted blue eyes and I think I can fix it with, with this genetic kit and you can, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it's really, and, and, and some really bad outcomes are happening. You know, there's a lot of people playing God and, uh, but on the other hand, it's kind of pushing stuff forward. You know, it's kind of pushing all the, the envelope forward. So I don't know if that answered your question, but yes, it's, it's, it's making progress. Uh, there, there isn't, uh, I don't, that I know of yet. And there, and we might get an email tomorrow uh, from some researcher in Boston that says, we we've, we've got a new study a new trial for a new drug that looks like it's going to you know take this symptom away or that symptom away um we haven't really had we've had a lot of um near misses and we've had a lot of uh, hope that this or that and and the other thing that happens in scientific research and this is something people don't realize that they should realize is that it can get very political very fast. And I don't mean political in the macro. I mean, it can also get political in the macro. Don't get me wrong. But it can also get political in the micro, like this researcher is trying to beat this researcher, you know, to the, to the, yeah. they're, they're trying to win the race to get to this drug or whatever. And they're trying to raise money and this person's trying to raise money and they're all trying to, you know, and there's like this, there, there's weird infighting and political gaming and all of this stuff that happens. So mm -hmm. if you think that scientific research is this like wonderful, like, you know, let's stand on the hill and be reverent to the scientists and they're doing It's like, that's not how it, that's not what it is. It's, it's a bunch of humans doing what humans do. Uh, yeah. which is, you know, trying to figure some stuff out. And, and uh, sometimes they're, you know, they're getting in their own way and, you know, like we all do. And don't get me wrong, I'm for them. You know, I'm rooting them on. And there's a lot of smart, smart people out there doing a lot of great work. Uh, but it's not as simple as people think it is. People think science is this, you know, uh, sacrosanct place where nothing you know untoward ever happens and you know now it's a place where people you know get too drunk at the christmas party and act like a fool just like the rest of us you know that's the scientists i've met are human beings um so we've had you know people make claims you know so a scientist will think hey i think i'm onto something you know so we'll get a bunch of money pushed over there and then realize well they weren't close as close as they thought they were you know and they were actually maybe going down the wrong path and so let's look over here at this one i think i got i think i've got it figured out or i've got half of it figured out okay well we'll put some money over here with you and then they'll get halfway down the right path and then maybe go over the wrong path you know that's that's the nature of it and um so uh, I'm like I said, I'm for them. I'm rooting for all of them. You know, I, 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 I just uh, I don't I don't live in the world that I used to live in the world of research. And it was driving me crazy because I was like, yeah. I don't I don't want you guys to be like me. <laughs> I need you to be better than me. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, but yeah, the, to, to me, the thing that's moving forward the best is the, the the community talking and you know people sharing basically recipes for life here's what we did and this worked with our son here's what we did and this worked with our daughter hey we tried this drug don't try that you know that did not work and so there's a lot of that and um so we 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 do keep in touch with the community in that regard and you know unfortunately sometimes that means that you're getting there's some bad news out there that you hear about and you hear about it from all over the world the, the, you know the angelman community is global so if if we lose one you know we hear about that too so i don't know if that answered your question but yes yes it does <laughs> no um no i just i, I i'm i'm a fixer <laughs> so i want to go in and yeah. okay how can I help? What can I, you know? Yeah. And when I'm talking to someone that is dealing with what you're dealing with, 
I know a hug's not going to fix it. Right. You know, what? How do I ask this? What do you need? What do you, what <laughs> do you need? I mean, seriously. That's what? a, you know what? That is a great question, Donna. That is a really great question. Uh, you know what? I, I, people have asked this before. And I let me tell you some some things that that have happened in our life that that really work. Mm -hmm. I'm you know, I'm still buying diapers. You know, 21 years later I still have to buy diapers. And that I was talking to my best friend about that. I said, it's so weird that I've got diapers in my line item budget still, you know, after 21 years. And he, he and his wife were like, you don't need to buy diapers. You need, to, that needs to be something you don't need to worry about. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's just diapers, but he's like, they started a foundation just to buy us diapers. Wow. And diapers show up at our door every month. We, uh -huh. we, we need diapers and we need certain pads and we need, there's, there's a few things in that uh, genre that we have uh -huh. to, and it's, it's, it honestly, Don, it's not even really about the money. I mean, it is money and it's, it's absolutely like a blessing, but it's more about the, oh, I can take that off my list. You know, it's like that, that's something that I don't, oh my gosh, that shows up at my door and I don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff that people who are caregivers, that's, that's what really helps is if you can, if you can find a little thing like that to just take off the list, like, okay. And, and I can't tell you how much more it makes you breathe because mm -hmm. you're just in this cycle, man. You're just in this grind. And then it's all of a sudden it's like this little thing. It's like having a pebble in your shoe and somebody mm -hmm. goes, let me take that little pebble out for you. And you're like, oh, yes. my gosh, I, I can walk better, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's about taking pebbles out of people's shoes. You know, uh, when we had our foundation, we just sent people on vacations. We tried to fund research. We tried to fund therapies. We, we had all these grand ideas. And one day uh, my wife used to work at this thing called uh, uh, Live in the Vineyard. It was a music event. She her old boss at Curb Records would wrangle her in for a couple of weeks a year and and she was kind of the person who she was the concierge and my wife is great at this. And she would plan an amazing event, you know, for these VIPs would come and then they'd go meet Sarah McLaughlin and they'd go meet, you know, Lenny Kravitz and whatever. And my wife basically made all that happen. And we were talking about it and I said, you know, that's just, this is what we do. This is what we do. The We ought to just do that for people because mm -hmm. these people need vacations as, as much as, and we gave vacations away. And I'm telling you, every couple we sent on vacation said, you saved our marriage. No mm -hmm. one, no one had ever thought to just give us a vacation and we yeah. would send a caregiving team to their house. So they didn't have to worry about that. And the caregiving team consisted of people who had Angelman kids who knew how to deal with it. So it wasn't like some caregiver that, you know, kind of knew about Angelman. It was like, nope, that they know what the deal is. And so we would work that out first. And then we would send them to this live in the vineyard event where my wife would basically hook them up with everything. They would have, they'd stay in these great hotels and they'd have great wine and great food. And they, they would hear great music and they would meet people if they wanted to, if they didn't want to come out of the room, they didn't have to, but it was just this time where they could breathe. And it's like, it was, we got such great response from it. Um, and it, 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 it was, it was wonderful. We loved doing it, but it, it, it almost, it just became too much for us to continue to do. Um, yeah. And we never got one. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we sent a bunch of people on vacation, but we never got one. Uh, and we, you know, so finally we, we just shut the foundation down because it was like, it was, it was too difficult for us to actually do, but it, but it's stuff like that. Just like taking pebbles out of people's shoes, like little things you wouldn't think about normally, um, I'll tell you this, my, my daughter is 21 years old. I can, I can count on one hand, one hand, the number of times someone has come to my house and said, can I take your daughter to the park? I can count on one hand in 20 years. 
And it's like, I want to scream to people. She's a great hang at the park. You know what I mean? And it would mean so much to her for somebody. We had this, these friends who were from England and they just, they were just watching us one, one time. And she was little or she was little then. And they just out of the blue one day just showed up and said, can, can we take Bella to the park? And we're like, yes, you can. We're always the ones who take her. And it was the biggest day for her. She got to go with someone else to the park. She never, mm -hmm. she never goes with anybody else. To, you know what I mean? Her teachers at school and us, that's it. And it was mm -hmm. like this. It, it's so, so really it's stuff like that. You know, it's like, it's like the little things you don't ever think about. That's the stuff that really helps people. Um, th these friends that I, I was telling my, my best friend from high school, just every once in a while, they'll just like, Hey man, there's 50 bucks in your Venmo account. I just wanted to, not that, you know, like we're not talking about people who are destitute, but it's just stuff like that. It's like, oh man, okay, well, that's cool. I, I I don't have to think about dinner today or whatever, you know, just anything you can take off somebody's plate that it's like, I don't have to think about that today. Cool. That's awesome. That That's really the stuff that propels you. And, mm -hmm. and that, that diaper thing, I mean, I didn't even think, I didn't, I didn't even know how big a deal that would be. But just the fact that I don't have to think about that every month, the, the the proper diapers that we need show up at our door. And all I have to do is walk out there and bring them in. And it's just automatic. I mean, that's that's probably one of the biggest things anyone's ever done for us, you know, is just that. Yeah. And and my wife and and my my friend's wife, you know, she was very. um she was very like respectful to, to call and say, it wasn't like just some surprise that we didn't, she's like, look, tell me what you, brand you need, the size, the, this, the, that, you know, I want all of the, the details. I want exactly what you need. And it's going to show up every, every month. And she's got a group of people there in her town and they contribute and they just, they wanted to make this happen. It was like something they wanted to do. Wow. And I, I can buy diapers you know, not a big deal. I can go buy diapers, but not having to is really cool, you know? Mm -hmm. So again, I don't know if I'm answering any of your questions, but that's for You're people helping. who want to know, you know, how, how do I help a family that's got special needs? It's like, maybe this just is, ask them, you know? This, I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. This is, that people will know how to help. And what, you know, and you talked about angel minds and what it, you know, what it is. Right. And so just because you don't know, I mean, like myself, I don't know what to do. Right. I don't know what to say. You know, what do I say to somebody that their child has angel minds? Right. I don't. A hundred percent. No, a hundred percent. And that is, you're exactly right. And, and I, I will say, you know, Yolanda and I talk about this often. It, it, there's no we don't have any ill will toward people. Nobody knows what, to, and, and honestly, Donna, most of the time, the answer to your question is there's really nothing you can do. Like not a thing. I mean, I, I just, I, I can't think of anything that anybody can do, you know, like we, what we do every day, it just mainly requires us to do it. It's like nobody can really walk in and do this. But I think it is just finding a little thing, you know, and just at, and, and really, you know, if you've got somebody in your life who's a caregiver um, and they've got a child with special needs, I, the very first thing you can do is acknowledge it. That's the mm -hmm. first thing you can do. They know that their child is the way their child is. You, you know, you don't have to tiptoe around it. They already know. Yeah. You know, if they've got a if they've got a child with Down syndrome, they know they have a child with Down syndrome. So you can be very free with your language, and you can say, uh, "So Jesse's got Down syndrome. Let me ask you a question. What can I do to help you? Is there something I could do to help you with that? I know that's a challenge. That's the that's the simplest way to address it. Yeah. Or if you don't want to help, then you don't have to. <laughs> but Sometimes it's just enough to acknowledge that must be, that must be tough. Tell me something about that. That that's something you can do. 
what you just asked is like such a big thing. What, what, what can I do to help? Or, or just tell me about that. Sometimes I know as a parent, when we, when it was early, um, and us dealing with it, sometimes I just, I just kind of wanted somebody to ask so I could kind of go off, you know, so I would have somebody to talk to about it because it's like, man, I, I haven't been able to tell anybody about this. That's and, what, and my whole reason for doing this was not to know all the deep, dirty details of right. or anything like that. It was to know, you know, how can we help? What can we do? What can, you know, right. Um, it, it's, it's about just, I don't, I don't, I'm not using my words correctly today. I think you're using them perfectly. I, th I think I, I, and I think I know exactly what you mean. And, and it's a very kind, listen, here's what I've also found. I have also found that people really want to help. I have not found that people for the most part, I, I, well, two things. There, there's a negative. I, I think you do find that people will sometimes not want it in their life because it is too big of a burden. It's, it's too much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, man, I cannot, I got, I got so much going on. My own. I, I like, I can't get my arms around that. That's one reaction people have, but for the most part, uh, they they're like, but if there's something I could do today, I I, I would love to help. I I, I like uh, two years ago, I broke my arm. I've still got the scar mm -hmm. here. You may remember yeah. this. I fell and broke my arm in half. Mm -hmm. And I do all of the physical uh, stuff for Bella. And yeah. we knew I'm out of going. I'm gonna be out of commission for three months, four months. We're gonna need to bring in help. And we were trying to figure it out. My wife was taking a leave of absence from her job. I wasn't going to be able to do anything because, I mean, I use my both my hands to, you know, and I'm, I'm done for for six months, maybe. So I was literally just kind of like, man. What would be nice if I had a little if I had a little cash on hand, that we could offer some caregivers to come in and just help. Mm -hmm. and so I just put a GoFundMe up like I, I didn't I didn't really think about it I didn't like I was just like I don't even know if, if we get four or five hundred bucks that that might help get us through the week here and you know figure it out so I put a GoFundMe up I took some pictures of the arm you know I was just like uh, guys you know we half of me is down and I'm the guy that does this so, you know, if you if you if you're thinking, what can I do to help you guys, please don't send food. That's like the, the worst thing you can do. Do not order us food because it it might not be the kind of food that the kids want. And, and you know, just just ordering somebody food is, is a really nice gesture, but it's it's complicated. My daughter's on a special diet, all of that stuff. Um, but if you want to do anything. Throw some cash in the in the GoFundMe. That's really all we need at this point. We can figure it out with a little extra cash. That's like like twenty three or twenty four thousand dollars. People raised. Wow. wow. I was I was blown away. Hmm. I and I did I didn't check it. This is the funny thing. I I didn't really even check it until I was at the hospital about to get my arm fused together, and. The lady goes, now, you know, you have to come up with $2,000 today. You know, that's your copay. How, how oh, would you wow. like to pay? And, and and I had been in the lobby, like looking at this GoFundMe, like, wow. And I was able right there, you know, like it was that. that another thing I don't have to think about. I don't have to think about what account and what are we going to move money here or there. It was like, oh, OK, well, I got the money right here and I, we'll pay it with this. And it was so perfectly you know, it was just a, a great gesture. Um, and, and so, you know, anytime you've got a ailment like that, you've always got little expenses here and there you didn't think about. And I was able, you know, so I sent the mortgage payments in and all that stuff just came from that. And it was like, wow, uh, another thing, another pebble taken out of your shoe, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so it's stuff like that, man. I, 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 uh, 
but I think a lot of it really is, I think if you're, if you were to talk to a caregiver, so much of it would be just, Hey, can I just vent to you every once in a while? You know, can I just go off and tell you about my day? Um, or just acknowledge, you know, just acknowledge that, that they're, I, I, especially people with a very severe disability very often just get ignored. We don't want to look at it. Because we don't know how to fix it. We don't know how to fix it. We don't know how to address it. How do you talk to someone? I, I, I was in the mall one day and uh, there was this kid in a, in a, in a wheelchair, but it wasn't just a wheelchair. It was like, he had the thing around his head, the halo, and he was just very st still and I could tell we've got a real serious challenge here. You know, he was, it looked like he was a quadriplegic and caregiver was there feeding him. And um, I just sat down next to them and I said, can you tell me what your challenges are here? And she got real defensive at, at first. She goes, we got all kinds of challenges. And then she goes, oh, you're literally asking well, like, what he has. I said, yeah, what, what does he have? She goes, well, you know, he's got something where he's his his thing was a chromosome that was on 14 that was missing. And she's like, you know, nobody ever asks it that way. Like they, they she goes, I thought you were being funny. I was like, no, I've got a daughter with that's missing a piece of 15. And I was just curious, you know, and and he kind of lit up and you could see he was excited that somebody was addressing him, you know, acknowledging his existence instead of looking away and don't stare, don't stare, you know? Um, and we talked for, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes and she started crying, you know, and it was just, she's like, you know, nobody ever wants to talk about it. They're all, they're all scared to talk about it. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> I know. And I probably would have been at one point in my life too, you know? Um, but like I said, everybody who's got that challenge, they know. They know they do. You're not telling them anything they don't know, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like someone who is severely overweight. You know, you know, you don't have to tell them that, right? You know that they know that, right? Mm -hmm. um, if someone's got a some kind of disfigurement, um, you know, you don't have to tell them. You don't, you don't have to say it all. I mean, what's it? You got that big thing on your face. They know, you know, they, they, they've lived with it their whole life. They know. And, so, you know, so, so it, it doesn't have to be this, this weird elephant in the room that, you know, doesn't get addressed. I know my daughter has Angelman syndrome. My daughter knows she has Angelman syndrome, you know, her brother knows and her mother knows, we all know. And um, so just a proper acknowledgement of it sometimes is, is enough. I'm just going off when you've done. I'm so sorry. I, I, I... Oh, no, no, no. I really appreciate you. <laughs> you caught me on the wrong day. To, I'm just going to be really honest with you. This has been such a doozy of a day. This has been a, this has been one of those deep water kind of caregiver days where, you know, some, yeah. some of them are, you're just cruising and it's great. And you're, and it's just like, you know, smooth sailing. And some days are like today where it's like, man, this has been a slog all day. Um, I'm so and, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be good. And I'm not going to be, honestly, I'm not going to be able to be here too much longer because I need to get back to it. But uh, I gotcha. No, yeah. you're fine. I just really appreciate you coming on here and sharing, you know, yeah. and, um, with us. And I'm just, it, there are several people that um, I'm wanting to reach out to. And I, I've reached, I reached out to one person. I didn't say any names and um, I never even got a response back and I'm like well maybe they think that I'm trying to get all the dirt or all and I'm not that's not right. what I'm trying to do I'm right. trying to bring awareness to you know what you've been through yeah um, there was one person that um, lost her son to suicide mm. and it's been several years, so it's yeah. not like it was yesterday. Right. And she wasn't rude or anything like that, you know, but I'm, 
I just want for others out there that have challenges, that have children, you know, maybe they just found out their kid has angelments. Maybe right. they just found, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Yeah. That there's, you know, hearing your voice and putting a face to something like gives them hope. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. I think it does. I think, I think hearing other people talk about what you're going through. I'll tell you when, when the angelman community gets together, when we, when we go to a gala or a, an event or, or something, um, inevitably, you know, families will get together and start, you know, just kind of st sharing stories and it's so cathartic and it's, but it's also weird because you realize that not a lot of people can relate to some of this, you know, um, but it's good to hear other people around the table say what they've had to deal with. And it makes you feel not so alone. Like, Oh my gosh. Okay. So we're not the only ones who had to deal with that, you know? So, yeah, I like, I, I, I will tell you this. I, I'm, I'm glad you're doing this. And I agree with you that more of the voices need to be out there. I, I am a TikTok kind of addict and a YouTube addict. I scroll and I haven't heard one voice on any social media platform adequately address my life. Not Dave mm -hmm. Ramsey, not Jordan Peterson, not, you know, it, yeah. not, not Brene Brown, no, no, none of the, and I love all these people. I, it's not that I don't like what, and I will listen to what they have to say. And it's, they're shooting a big shotgun to a lot of people, but it's like, mm -hmm. you, you don't have any idea about my life everything none of, nothing you're saying addresses me um mm -hmm. and so I, yeah and so i think there's a there's a hole there you know for people to talk that's, about this um because i i certainly would have i'll tell you in 2004 or 2005 let's say if there had been a podcast like this and someone had been talking i mean i would have devoured it because you know, we were in the wilderness, like what, what in the world does our daughter have? And, you know, so I'm glad you're doing it. Honestly, I'm glad. And I hope you get more people on and maybe, maybe me sitting here ranting for an hour will help you do that. You know, I so. have a friend that um, is going to be on soon. I hope every time we try to get together, something happens, but um, her and her husband lost their son her, their son graduated high school and the very next day was killed uh, a vehicle uh, lord and now it's been years but i wanted her to come on and not share like you were studying not share the dirty details not right. share the stuff but just share you know say hey i've i've been there you know for anybody out there that's listening yeah you know, that's lost a loved one that's lost a child i've been there and there's hope yeah there's hope right it's going to be hard as hell you're going to have really bad days yeah but you're going to you're going to get through it right yes and that's reason that's my reason for doing what i'm doing well god love you and, and god bless you for doing it um, I, well, I, and I hope that I don't know that I've offered too much hope <laughs> today. Um, it is it is absolutely. I will say this, uh, and maybe this is is the hopeful note I can end on. As much as I talk about, you know, the challenges, I mean, I wouldn't go back at all to my life before. I don't. I, I have no desire to be the person I was before Bella. I have no desire to have her not be in my life, to not be, for, to not have my kids be, you know, one of the focal points. Now I will say this about 10 years ago, one of the things we did realize was that, uh, you know, our life, we have, we have one person of the four people in our life that has Angelman syndrome. That's 25% of our house with Angelman syndrome. And we made a conscious decision that we weren't going to let Angelman syndrome uh, devour a hundred percent of our house, that we were going to let it have its space. And that's all the space we were going to give it. 
doesn't mean she doesn't get as much space as she wants, but that thing, that big demon, you know, of Angelman syndrome only gets so much space. And I don't know if that's going to make any sense to anybody, but I think you have to, for, oh. for our, for our son's sake and for our sake, it had to be, yes. we, do, we develop, we, we devote this much attention to Angelman syndrome. That's, that's different than our daughter. Now, obviously it's complicated because our daughter has Angelman syndrome, but it's like, we're going to be parents to our daughter and parents to our son and Angelman syndrome has this much space in our house, but it's not going to eat the whole house, you know, and I, and I, in, in practical way, uh, the way that you act that out practically was that's one of the reasons we shut down the foundation. You know, it's one of the reasons we stopped doing all of the fundraising that we did. Um, you know, we, we were dangerously close to being professional Angelman people. And that's when we kind of had to pull back and, and, you know, go that, that, that's not what we want this to be. You know, we want to be the parents of someone with Angelman syndrome. We don't want to be like spokespeople. You know, we're not trying to be on posters and all that stuff for that. We have enough of that in our life because, you know, I wrote a book about it and it, it was option to be a film and all that stuff. If that, if all that stuff happens, that's great. And we'll, it'll be able to bring awareness to it. Um, but even what I'm about, you know, I'm about to do this band show. And some of that has to do with me. Like I can't, I, I'm, I can't be in service anymore as an artist, just to this one thing in my house. Like I've got other things going on in my life and, and I think I think I spent a few years too many just wrapping everything up in Angelman syndrome. You know, well, there's a lot more going on in this house than just Angelman syndrome. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that helps uh, anybody, you know, but having said that, uh, it, it, it definitely changed our life and in so many ways for the better. So mm -hmm. I feel like I have so much more empathy. I feel like that. I've learned how to, you know, my daughter has really just taught me how to like be a more unconditional love type person, uh, how to, how to view people who are marginalized differently than maybe I did before. Um, and again, everything, small stuff, and I don't sweat any of it, <laughs> you know, don't take myself too seriously. Don't take my career too seriously. Don't take any of this stuff too seriously. It's just all dust and you know, the, the real stuff is, is love and, and, uh, the people you have around you and all that stuff. So I, as much as I may, you know, uh, lament some of the stuff that happens in this life, I'm definitely better off. I, I would way rather be where I am now than before. And, I think if you talk to, you won't get that answer from everybody. I've, I've talked to some people who are like, no, this is awful. And I don't want, but some people feel the same way I feel. Yeah. So, and if you can, if you can get there, if you can get to the other side of the, of the trauma aspect of it, and there is a lot of trauma, there's so much PTSD in the caregiving community and they don't even know they have it. And all the research and I've dealt with, with veterans with severe PTSD, I've worked with them in songwriting therapy for years, 10 years. And the research suggests that people who are caregiving parents of someone with, P uh, of someone with special needs have almost an equal severe severity of PTSD. They, they have dealt with the same trauma. And one, and one of the aspects of it is when you're in combat, every move you make could get somebody killed. And that's part of the trauma right there is you at, 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 at any given time. And it's the same way when you're, when you, when you're caring for someone with angel Angelman syndrome in particular, I could literally get my daughter killed at any minute of the day. You know, if I don't do the right thing, if we mismedicate, if I don't have her tightly, you know, next to me when I'm walking downstairs, all of this stuff can get her really injured and, and quite possibly killed. And so that that stress ramps up it's chronic you can't you can't get rid of it it's it's with you you know all the time um but but it's a beautiful but it's a beautiful life and so i i i literally just wouldn't trade it believe it or not <laughs> even after saying all that i just i, I think it's 
it's given me a, a much better perspective on everything. Well, before we end, I know that you're getting ready to do your gig. You have a new gig coming up. Is that the proper word to use? Kid? It is. That's the perfect word. You you nailed it. Yeah, I'm doing the, my first band show in 20 years. Um, I stopped working with a band when basically when we brought my daughter home. And I just it was too expensive and it was too complicated. And, you know, I had to strip my life down to the simple stuff. And I was like, man, if I, I just have to go out with my piano and do this, if I'm going to do this, I, I can't keep doing all that, you know, dealing with four other people is a, you know, it's a haul. Kind of went broke too, you know, cause it's just, you know, more mouths to feed and you're on the road. It's, it, it, it's, you got to do it right. And, um, when I lost my record deal and all that stuff went South, I just didn't have the money to do it. And I never went back to it. I never really ever really want to go back to it. And then when the American Idol thing happened and I had this great story to tell, that was really my show was telling that story. And I didn't need a band for that. And uh, last year I put a new record out and a few people at the listening party said, man, I would love to hear you do this with a live band somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I never, I, I didn't think about it even while I was making the record. I didn't think about it. I, I it never crossed my mind that I'm ever going to perform this with a live band. I, I was like, I, don't care. Uh, now, not even that I don't care. I'm just not even thinking about it. Just not on my radar. And that was what made me, those people coming up to me at, at the listening party and telling me that made me think, hmm, maybe I should. Tried to put a show together for last fall and it just, it, it, we didn't have some things in place. It didn't work. Um, but uh, the 23rd of this month, uh, three weeks from today, basically, um, is my first band show in 20 years and I'm terrified. <laughs> I don't get nervous and I am terrified about this, uh, but we're going to do it and uh, see how it goes. And at this point at my age, people ask me why I'm doing it. And it's like, I'd like to get this on camera just so I can, you know, have it for posterity. I did, I did this one great band show and, you know, and, and so, um, and, and I'll put it up on YouTube or something and my son will be, will be able to see it, you know, <laughs> and if that's the, if that's it, if that's my last band show ever, it's fine too. So, but we're getting ready to do it. So I'm excited and nervous. Well, it, it's going to be great. You're going to, you're going to do fine. It'll all, it'll all be wonderful. Well, it'll all be over in about two hours. So <laughs> if it's not, It'll be over in two hours. If it's great, it'll be over in two hours. Either way, it'll all be over in about two hours. So, Well, I am so glad that you came over and visited with me today. Yeah, me too. And thank you for sharing your heart and talking about Bella and all the Angelman stuff. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm, I'm praying that somebody, you know, that I'm just going to stick it out there and I'm just sticking these podcasts out there and praying that. Yeah. Because people awesome. are getting telling stories. I had a lady on real quick. <laughs> I had a friend on a while back and um, she just got really blind. <laughs> <She> just, <laughs> you know, my sister, my little, my little uh, uh, preacher, preacher's wife's, you know, she's a preacher's wife, my sister. Yeah. And I said, Yeah, did, did you listen to so and so? Yes, I did. <laughs> I said, well, she goes, That was my favorite podcast. Ah! I said, She got your preacher's wife. She got kind of blood. <laughs> oh, preacher's wives like it. I, I know. Trust me. I know a bunch <laughs> of them. <laughs> I love it. And I mean, because my friend asked me, She goes, Can I say the word sex on here? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I said, well, I well if you want me to talk about sex, that's going to be another one for another day, Donna. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just throwing that out there. I just, it, you know, I'm I'm putting these these podcasts out there and I'm hoping, because my friend, she was making a point. When she was telling her story, she was making a point. Yeah. And all the, all the hell that she went through. Yeah. And some of, of her own making. Mm. 
and it, it just I, my prayer is that somebody hears what's being said yeah. and they 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 get hope yeah that hope, me too you know and, yeah. and that's why that's why the podcast is going on that's awesome well me too that's what i hope too thank you for having I, me on i love you my friend i love and, you too uh, please uh give your wife a hug and that baby a hug and your son a hug for me and y'all will do and we will catch up later let's do it okay hon. all right talk to you later okay, okay. Bye-bye. bye bye